is no strategy in the world that's going to help us deal with change and chaos if we're not resilient at the core. Because resilience is a must-have skill to survive and to grow personally and professionally. Um, I know you're all back from lunch, and I don't want to put you to sleep, but I'd like to tell you a little bedtime story, one you may remember from your childhood. Once upon a time, deep in the woods lived an oak and a reed. The oak would stand tall and proud, the reed rather tiny and humble. The oak would often boast and say, look at you, even the slightest wind is enough to bend you, but I'm so strong. The reed would answer, don't you worry about me, time will only show who's stronger. Then, one day, out of nowhere came a big storm and huge winds. The oak fought it hard, but in the end, fell to the ground. The reed, on the other hand, bent all the way down, but managed to stay rooted in the ground. The moral of the story is this. To survive the storms in life, we need to yield to the winds. We need to be flexible, not so rigid. We need to be humble, not so proud. For if we bend, we don't break. And this is what resilience is all about. And for me, it's the superpower to have today and tomorrow. In fact, I think resilience is the superpower of the child that we still carry in each of us today. Believe me, I should know, for it took me many, many years, about 50, to get back in touch with my own resilience. I spent 10 years working in advertising at a major company. Then I spent another 10 years working in consulting at my own company. I was very good in what I did, I thought, but I wasn't really satisfied with who I was, and it took me two personal crises and three career changes to tap back into my own resilience. With 25 professional years behind me today, I can say that people and companies alike change and grow best in the face of adversity. You see, we truly reach for that grit when we feel weak. We challenge our identities when hardship strikes. And we test our boundaries for resilience when something terrible happens all of a sudden. But I have good news. As a leadership coach, I'm here to help you discover your own superpower of resilience. People often ask me two questions. One, how can I be more resilient as a person? And of course, two, how can I be more resilient at work professionally? I tell them, the answer is not complicated. It's quite simple, and it is one and the same. To be resilient requires realism, flexibility, and optimism, because only a resilient person can become a resilient leader, and only a resilient leader can build a resilient company. Um, check out Diane Koto's article in Harvard Business Review at some point, and she says that it doesn't matter if we're talking about a resilient company, a person, or a leader. Her research and her experience shows that to be resilient is to be realistic, it is to be flexible, and it is to be optimistic. I also say to be resilient is to be carefree, it is to be curious, and it is to be courageous, just like the child in each of us today. Because after all, resilience is about having childlike courage to look into our own abyss. It's having that childlike agility to bounce back from troubles. Do you have the courage to look into your own abyss? 
Yes? No? <laughs> well, my answer was no for a long time. I did not. Not until I sat in the therapy chair and started looking for some answers. The first time we met, my therapist was, of course, very nice to me. He was very patient. He listened to me for a long time, and then he said, I suggest a book called The Happiness Trap to accompany our sessions. The book talks about the impossible expectation of all of us to be happy all the time. The advice in the book is to accept life as is instead, the good together with the bad. And it is to look for purpose and meaning in life, as opposed to success or happiness first. Well, I think this is easier said than done because it requires a mind shift, a major one. And personally, it took me not one, but two midlife crises to make this leap of faith and truly change. In 2008, uh, I had just turned 40, which is a nightmare for a woman, especially. I was single, and uh, my father was just diagnosed with an incurable immune disease, and due to the crisis, my income, all of a sudden, I, was, I had my own company in consulting, was cut in half all of a sudden. So I found myself crying over the phone, telling my best friend, I simply couldn't make it to her 40th birthday bash because I was having major, big-time panic attacks. I was just too anxious to walk outside the house. So a trip to the therapist's office instead, and antidepressants, and in no time, I was back on the fast track, drugs. <laughs> An answer. 2012, it caught up with me again. Some personal and professional issues again led to panic attacks. Again, I was put on antidepressants. But this time, my anxiety and my fatigue just persisted. It kept coming back. So I went from doctor to doctor, and finally my doctor told me, I can't run any more tests, you're fine, but I think you need serious therapy. So why did I have a breakdown? Not once, but twice. This question got me into that therapy chair, but what got me off it was something else. As I practiced ACT, acceptance and commitment therapy, I discovered my superpower of resilience. And with that came my, with the healing, came my calling, which is to learn more and more about resilience and to coach for resilience. And during this journey, there are two scholars whose works really resonated with me. They helped me find my own formula for resilience. The first one is Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl uh, was a neurologist, a psychiatrist, a world-famous writer, a Holocaust survivor, but above all, my hero. His life is a story in resilience. In 1942, when he was sent to um, the concentration camps, he tragically lost all his family members. But miraculously, with luck also on his side, he managed to survive. And upon survival, he dictated a book in nine days. It was to become a nine million bestseller called Men's Search for Meaning. In it, he says, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. He means, if we can't control our circumstances, we have one freedom left, to control our attitude to those circumstances. And he calls this tragic optimism, being optimistic despite tragedy striking us, and it does definitely in our lives at some point. I simply call this our superpower of resilience. The second scholar who really resonated with me and taught me a lot is Aaron Antonovsky. He is originally a sociologist um, and also has a PhD in medicine. And he's very famous for his salutogenesis theory about the relationship between health and stress. When he was studying survivors of trauma, he saw that some survivors were a lot more healthy 
emotionally, physically, mentally than others, and he questioned how and why, and he found that those people who were more resilient were also more realistic, they were more resourceful, and they were more optimistic. He called this having a sense of coherence in life, physically and mentally. Again, I simply call it our natural superpower of resilience. For Frankel and Antonovsky, resilience is the superpower of realistic optimism. For me, resilience is the superpower of the child, that curious, courageous, carefree child that still exists today in each of us. But the question remains, how? How can we be resilient despite trauma and tragedy? How can we have that childlike courage to look into our own abyss? How can we show childlike agility no matter what? Bear with me as I approach this differently. Do you remember the time when we listened to bedtime stories as children? How innocent were we? How carefree, how creative, how curious. Some of you may be seeing this in your own children today. I'm talking about a time before our parents and our teachers and our bosses finally taught us about what's right and what's wrong. I'm talking about a time when we played for hours on end. We just got lost in play. We fell, of course, but then we got right back up again. We had colorful dreams. We had lots and lots of fun, didn't we? Then something happened. We grew up. We matured. We learned the ways of the world. And as we did, we started to perform. And with that came performance anxiety. I was shivering back there <laughs> before I got on stage. So our anxieties peaked and our vulnerabilities plummeted. So that child, that little innocent creative child, just started hiding in the shadows. What to do? What to do? Well, I don't have magic with me today. I wish I did, but I can't take us back to our childhood. Nor am I suggesting that we unlearn everything we have learned, because that would be quite counterproductive. But what I am suggesting is to get back in touch with that child in all of us. One of my uh, husband's favorite writers, actually, Ursula Le Guin, sci-fi writer, she says, I believe that maturity is not an outgrowing, but a growing up. That an adult is not a dead child, but simply a child who survived. So if you'd like to take anything from me today, please take this. This is my simple formula to resilience. I call it the three C's of the child. So first, yeah. be carefree. Try to have a light-hearted spirit, just a tiny bit, no matter what happens. Two, be curious, like the terrible two-year-old, you know? Always ask questions, what, why, how? And finally, in your conduct, try to be as courageous as a child. Trust your gut, risk it, and go for it. Because after all, resilience is the superpower of that child in us. Today, at 51, life is hitting me hard again. My father's neurological disease, it's been 11 years, is taking its final toll on him. He sleeps most of the time, and he lost his voice lately, so he can't really speak, and he whispers to me, I want to die. On many days, I have to leave everything aside and run and take care of a health emergency. Therefore, I work part-time. But despite all this, today, somehow, I simply manage to survive. I do not sink. Despite the roller coaster of emotions, of anger, of sadness, of helplessness, I still manage to say yes to life. 
After all, it's Father's Day today, and here I am talking to you about resilience. This is a hope and a courage that only the child in me can feel. So, be it in your personal or professional lives, please get back in touch with that little child in you. Reread your fables before bed, for they will simply tell you, in a storm, yield to the winds. Be flexible, not so rigid. Be humble, not so proud. Have that courage to be vulnerable. Thank you.